I would like to introduce you to an interesting weaving technique. Here I've made a hat. It has amazing sideways stretch to it and not so much vertical sag. This is a sock. Same deal. It has sideways stretch for the foot but not vertical sag. This is a child's sweater that I made and you can see the interesting patterning that is possible. This is another hat that I made and you can see interesting designs. The deal about this technique is a sideways stretch and for every one row of work you can get two rows of cloth. What do I mean? How does that work? Well, let me begin by showing you these eight threads. This is the basic method. I have these threads arranged around the two sticks and this up and down, up and down arrangement helps keep order among the threads. I have them in two groups we call the white ones the front threads, and the red ones are the back threads. Notice number one is white, number two is red, and so on. This is how the technique works. I am holding them in my left hand, and one by one I'm going to transfer them to my right hand. Now left-handed people can, yes, do it the other way, but let me show the right-handed method here. I have a pinch grab and I've got a scissor grab. These are the two ways I'm going to use to take threads. I begin by using my thumb and index finger to take the back thread and then my scissor grab takes the first white front thread and what that does is it puts automatically the back thread in the front and the front thread here is held in the back. Okay, all the way across the row I pinch a back thread, scissor grab a front pinch a back, scissor grab a front. The back threads come to the front, front to the back, all the way across. So what has happened is the threads in pairs have traded position, kind of twisted around each other. And that's the initial row. I'm going to slide my index finger in here and now work a second row. If I were to do the second row exactly the same as the first, you will see these threads are just twisting one around another and that doesn't really engage much to form cloth. No. So the secret to this kind of work is that every second row begins by taking two threads to the front and then one to the back. One to the front, one to the back, one to the front, one to the back, one to the front, and a row that starts with this three thread edge stitch, two in front, one in back, will end with two in back and one in front. There's a special name for this kind of row. This is called a plate row, and it is always followed by an overplate row. Here I take one back thread to the front and front to back, back to front, front to back. Notice every time I move a thread, it seems to come behind two other threads. Here the red one comes behind two whites. I put one white down, I grab the next red thread, it comes under two, and I put one down. That's very important to notice. All right, the thread, the row that started with one up, one down, ends with one down, one up. That's the end of our overplate row. What kind of troubles can happen with this? Well, let's see. I'm beginning my plate row here, one up, one down. You want to make sure that you take the threads in order. If, for example, I grab the wrong thread, I grab this white thread, it will cause an irregularity in the face of the cloth, but as you're working what you notice is it looks like the threads are bunching together. Beware of bunching. That tells you that somebody is out of place. This is the thread that you want. One up, one down, and each thread should come underneath two others. Now another mistake it might happen. By mistake two threads go together. As you continue working along you're going to notice, oh, this thread only comes under one red. And when you get to the end of the row, you've got one up, one down, but this is a row that started with two up, one down. This row should have ended with the three thread edge stitch. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sneak back. You know what happened. Here I put two down together and it should have been only one down. And when I finish the row properly, we have the one up, two down, the three thread edge stitch here to match the three thread edge stitch over on this side. All right, that's my second plate row, and the plate row is always followed by an overplate row. Now, you will notice if all is going well, 
what it gives you is a cloth that looks very like chain link fence and it's got lots of sideways stretch to it. Now the thing that is really exciting about this technique is that when you work with the threads attached at both ends, as on a frame here, I have a frame and the threads are attached here at the top, lined up on the top, and every time I work a row, I can shove that work all the way down to the bottom, and at the bottom I've got cloth building up. The cloth builds up from bottom as well as from the top, and it eventually meets in the middle. I have two rows of cloth for every one row worked, and that is what we call sprang.